Hello guys, welcome back to another episode here on African Confessions. There is a message that I want to share with you guys and this message, it was sent to me by one of our admins and the message reads like this. Hello my brother, how are you? I am a lady who is in her early 60s and today I want to share my story with the rest of the world. I have been married but the partner that I was married to, he passed away before my marriage to my late husband. I had four children that I got from my sister's husband. But these children, my brother, it was not because I wanted to have those children, but children are gifts from God. I still love them. But the way that I gave birth to all of my children, it was through abuse. So in those days, I was only a young lady. Then our elder sister, she then got married. The man that she got married to was a man who was really financially stable. So when he entered into our family, that man then started to control my parents. Anything that he wanted to be done, then my parents will be left with no choice but to follow his instructions since their son-in-law was a wealthy man. Then my sister, when she fell pregnant the first time, that was when my mom forced me to go and stay with my elder sister. When we went there, it was me and my other sister. It was when we moved out that my brother-in-law started to make some moves on me. He used to enter into the room where I was sleeping because me and my other sister that had gone with me to stay with our elder sister, we were all sleeping in separate rooms. So my brother-in-law, on many nights, he would stay in the living room as if he was watching some movies. Then late at night, he would enter into that spare room in which I was sleeping. Sleeping, then he will abuse me. Men had a lot of power, especially those ones that are rich. They can have power over their in-laws and the rest of their family. So I could not even report this thing because I knew that my parents will never agree that their son-in-law was busy abusing me. I then became pregnant at that time when my elder sister had recently given birth and only to discover the following year that my younger sister was pregnant also. This really hurt all of us and to my elder sister, she felt like we had betrayed her but she didn't know that her husband had actually raped me. So that is how I got four of my children. Ten years later, my brother-in-law, father of my children, then found someone to marry me and I was forced to leave all of my children with my sister. I entered into an organized marriage. I didn't even have the chance to choose the man that I eventually got married to. So I got married and me and that man, we never had a child and I didn't get to raise any of my children because what will happen is that after my brother-in-law, when he had finished abusing me and when you will see that I have fallen pregnant, then he will leave me so that I can give birth. And after I have given birth, that is when he will start again to come into the room where I was staying. Then he will start to abuse me again. This is what this is the way that we used to stay. My sister was the one who was sleeping in the main bedroom. Then I had my other bedroom that was renovated from a spare room to a little bit of a bigger bedroom. Then my younger sister, she had her own bedroom. So the way that we used to do our duties was that during the day, we will be busy working as if we were maids. Then late at night, then my sister's husband, he would choose whom he wanted to sleep with on that night. But on most nights, he will be sleeping with our elder sister. Like per week, there are seven days in a week. So what he will do is that maybe he will spend about four days sleeping with our elder sister. Then there's three days, that is when you would go into my younger sister's room. Then for two days, maybe you will be with me. He used to do this week in and week out. Now my partner then died. I was left all alone. 
even though I had never loved my partner that I got married to since it was just an organized marriage, but I had no choice but to stay with him, but I could not give him any children, and I never had that opportunity to raise my children. Since my parents were so poor, they let their son-in-law to control him. That is when I got a chance to take her and stay with her. At that time, I was now staying with my mom because I needed assistance because I couldn't do a lot of work alone since my new husband had passed away. When I took my mother in, we started to stay together, but we didn't stay together permanently here and there. My mom would go back to the village so that she can check up on our father. For the first time in my life, I had someone to talk to and my life was feeling much better. One day, I really had a terrible ear infection and I went to this other man in the village to get some help. He was well fixed in herbs and he knew the traditional ways of healing certain diseases. As I narrated my story, he told me that this was a very small problem and if I fill instructions, my problems will be gone in a few days. He gave me roots three of them, and they were in a container. I then went home, and I put them right behind the door, like he had told me. Later that night, as I wanted to pour water in the container so that I apply the medication in my ear, I then went in my room, and as I opened the door, I saw three short boys seated on my bed. I had never been scared like this in my life. All that I did was I felt my heart skipping a bit, then I felt my pants wetting. I felt to close my mouth and I closed the door and I went out. I thought that I had lost my mind and I went back again and I saw three boys so I was not dreaming. I closed the door and I started to run to that old man. This is a man that was well known in that village. He was well respected. He didn't look shocked to have me at his home at around seven. It was in the dark already. And I asked him why I had three people in my bedroom. And he said, ah, you need to start cooking for them. What? How could he give me people that I didn't ask for? And now he was telling me that I had to prepare some food for them. Those three boys that I had suddenly seen in my bedroom, they were not allowed to eat salty food. To tell you the truth, I didn't even know what to do. Because he was a man, he told me that I was not in a position to return these short boys that he had given to me back to him. My life had turned upside down and I had no one else to tell this story. So I left and I went back home. All the ways I kept on asking myself, why me? I didn't even expect that I was going to have tocologies in my life so simple. Upon my arrival, I found my mom waiting for me to cook and I cooked for her. Then she went to sleep early that evening. I went into the room. Then I saw those disfigured small boys and they had disappeared and I slept. Then in the middle of the night, I was woken up by a certain noise and those things were jumping up and down in my bed. Early in the morning, they whispered that they were hungry and I had to wake up and cook for them. This was just the beginning of my troubles. The following night were a nightmare. Those small boys started to sleep with me and I had never been abused like that. I later learned that these men were using me whilst those small boys were making money for him. I became tired and I didn't know what to do. I wanted to run and to never come back to my house again. It was when I decided to visit one of my daughters. At that time, she was a little bit mature, ripe for marriage. So I left my mom behind. I am sure that those tocologists looked for me and they could not find me. It was when they decided to strangle my mom to death. The following day, our neighbor found her sleeping on the floor with her mouth on the side. She had white foam that was flowing from her mouth and she was dead. I know what could have happened and I never forgave myself. 
My mom died because I left her with those unruly tokoloshes. We buried her and after the burial, I stood up and I wanted to confess everything that had happened. But I was really scared to confess because that man had came to me in my dreams. He had visited me and he told me that I was not even supposed to confess because if I was going to confess, then he was going to do something terrible to me. He said, I will do things to you that no one has ever done to you. And when I am done with you, you are going to learn to respect me. So when I wanted to confess, those words that he had told me came rushing back into my ears. Then I started to cry. At that point, it was all about saving my life. I didn't want the villagers to know that I was the one who had killed my own mother. Yo, dear listeners, right there was a message that I received. It was sent to me by one of our admins. Strange things do happen in this world. Dear sister, so what happened then to these Tokoloshis? Are they still with you or were they destroyed? What happened please uh, feel free to send an email or you can use our WhatsApp number. Then one of our admins will assist you.